What's up everybody? So today in this video what you're going to be learning is how to use the update record automation in Airtable. Now this is just going to be the native Airtable internal automation and so if you go up in the top right you'll see automations right there using those. So if you're interested in that stick around but if you're interested in anything that I do what I do is I'm an Airtable consultant so I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we help people just like you implement Airtable into their businesses. Uh, Airtable could be used for like a CRM, asset management, or even project management sometimes. Uh, and then also integrating with Slack, your communications, and anything like QuickBooks or Stripe for any payments. So that's what we do. We help business owners set up those systems and optimize them in their businesses. And you can check out the link in the description, request a consultation from me or someone on my team, and we can help you with that. Without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So as you can see, we are in a sales CRM and I'm gonna be giving you a few different ways that you can use this in here. So what I'm gonna be showing you is over here in the automations, as I was saying earlier, come up and click automations. We'll just add a new automation here. I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do this. So one that I actually just set up in my business because I don't have the exact same sales CRM that you see here, but I have, uh, it's actually pretty modified from this, but the concept is gonna be the same. So the first automation that I want to show is going to be a very simple one. So when a lot of times people will have like a form and they don't want, they want to pre-fill something in the form, but they don't want the people to see it. So if you had something pre-filled um, and you wanted to bring that in here, I don't know exactly what that would be. Maybe that'd be an interaction form. So maybe in this entry form, when this entry form is filled out, then what you, that was a, simple test of uh, something that didn't work but if you had a automation where the form was filled out and then you wanted something like if you wanted the notes um, taken out but you wanted something to be in there then what you could do is you could set up an automation so that uh, I'll show you how to do this real quick so when a record matches conditions in the this would be the interactions table then you'll we'll just say like do the conditions that they answered the form. So like the interaction is not empty, but that will never not be empty because that's a computed field, so type is not empty. So the reason why I say it won't ever be empty is because this is a formula field right here. So this will never be empty because it's computed. It's using, using those two, so there'll at least always be that dash in the middle. So it will never not be empty. Uh, but the discovery will be picked, the that computed field would be filled out. Maybe the date and time will not be empty. So we can run that real fast. And then what we can see, test ran successfully. So now we'll click done. So now this is where you might want to be updating something. So here you can update that record. So we can update the record using the record ID. This is the biggest, the most important part right here is having this record ID right here. So with the record ID, we need to pull in the record ID from step one. Now there's, I'm gonna be showing you really two good places that you can be pulling that from, and that's just doing this right here. So if we click done here now, um, we'll just wanna come in here and add other fields after we click the table. So the table we'll do is interactions. Now we can click these other fields. So if you remember what we were talking about earlier is we needed to add notes in here. We wanna automate notes to populate, but we don't want people to see it. So maybe we want to type into notes. Uh, we'll just say this is a test update automation. So now we can run this test and we can see that came in right there. So that updated. So now we'll turn this on and I'll show you this in live action. So if I duplicate this, um, that wasn't a great example. So if I duplicate this, then what should happen is it should update right there. So I didn't, I clicked right there right at the same time, but if I just duplicate this one again, you'll be able to see, I might actually overwrite that, uh, what you see right in there, we'll see. It should update it with the right information. So yeah, so if we delete this and then update this one again, then we'll see this in action right there. So you can see that was created by the API. So if we expand that, you'll be able to see over here, uh, me and automations via the API updated that. So that's one way of updating a record. Now, one that I really like is if you're using Airtable as a sales CRM, 
and you want to update uh, opportunity. You just had an interaction with someone though. So what you might want to do is in your entry form, like here you have the type of the interaction. And so what you might want to do is over here in this, uh, in here we have status. So we have all of these statuses here, qualification, proposal, evaluation, negotiation. So in our sales CRM, maybe we want to have a field in here to update that status. So what we can do is we can say uh, status post interaction. And we can make this a single select in here and we can say uh, like closed one, closed, lost, proposal, evaluation, and that kind of stuff. So I'd, ideally you want it to be the exact same drop down as you would have over here. So proposal, qualification, uh, negotiation. But basically what you want to use this for, um, and I'll go in and add those right now. All right, so I just added those. Now you can see all of them right here and they should be just the same. So you want to be tracking the status post the interaction. So what you can do now is you can say, still when this same form is filled out, you might want to pre-populate the notes, but now what you also want to go do is you want to update the status of the opportunity based on your most recent interaction. So this is best when it's just one, one form being filled out unless you get a very specific email maybe that they send you if you get an email and you receive it and you filter it to say like um this like we like specifically the email has to say we are ready to buy your services or something like that then you could have that be the trigger but here i would keep it to a manual process where a form is filled out that way people can consciously pick the status that they want to change it to so we're going to show you this right here. So I'm going to go back to uh, value by stage. And here we can see some are in the qualification, some are in the proposal, and some are in uh, closed one. So if I come up here and I do one on the BPS pilot, I will have to open the form. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. So we'll add an to the BPS pilot today and we'll say this is a this one was not this one was a demo call uh, we don't specifically need a contact but we'll leave that there and so now the status post interaction so this is where we want to pick the status post interaction um, and maybe we also want to add this other action in here so here what's interesting about this first one that we set up is we have when a form is filled out for this table, you're updating the same record. But what I've found you can do is you can go a step further and update the linked record. So here we have update whichever record the form is filled out in. And now we, ha we want to do another action to update a record. And here what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick wherever this linked record is. So our linked record is to the opportunities. So now if I come into the opportunities table, and this you're gonna to wanna to watch this step pretty carefully if you wanna be updating other tables uh, through these linked records. So I'll come in here and choose the, you wanna go all the way back to step one. And then what you wanna go do is you want to choose, like you wanna go into that linked record. So if I go into the linked record for the opportunity, what I will see in here is you'll see a list of the record IDs. So one thing to note here, there can only be one record ID here because if you notice this says update record, not update records. So if there's more than one in here, this will fail. But what you want to do is you want to find right here where it says rec and then like all this jargon. Uh, so that's the record ID and you want to insert that right there. So back to my point a second ago, there can only be one linked record in here where you're linking this interaction to an opportunity. And that's because it can't update multiple at one time. But now what I'm going to come in here do and do is I'm going to be updating this status. So when I update the status, I'm going to pull in uh, information from step two 
actually it can be it'll be step one um, so step one the status post interaction um, and we need to test this on a field so we can get some test data in here so I'm going to go back up and retest this to show you what that looks like so we also need the this cannot be empty for this example and so we'll come in here and we'll say we want to move them to proposal so now I can run that test again it will find that one very specific rec record and if we go to BPS pilot they're currently in qualification but now if we come down here to the opportunities we'll come in here and go back to step one and go down to that single select field so this was the single select field filled out in the form so this is what we want to be updating to and so as you can see what you're going to come in here is you're going to come into name and you're just going to insert the name so click insert right here and now you'll click run this test and it'll be cool watch what happens to bps pilot so you can see bps pilot just moved to proposal based on the interaction and the only link there was that linked field so now i'll click update and i'll show you what happens when we do this through the form so I'll click done there. This is all set up now. It's turned on and we're updating all of this. So if I uh, go back to that form and I update, we want to update him to qualification. So now if I submit that, <clears throat> what you'll see pretty quickly here is we move BPS pilot back to qualification. And we also added that interaction. If we go to the interaction, if we go to BPS pilot, it also pre-filled the notes there. So you can see it did that very fast, like snap of the fingers, it updated the notes in the interaction and it also updated BPS pilot's status just based off of an interaction form. So those are two simple update automations. Now there, it can get more tricky and more complicated. Uh, one that I would like to show in the future, is, and you might get the hint on where this is going, but if you <clears throat> come up here to a shared view, and you created a shared view link. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off so you won't be able to use that link, uh, although I don't know what it would do. But you can come in here and allow this to be synced. So if you have a synced table in here and you added like the record ID uh, as a field, what you could do is you could add a form to update a record in like the, in your main base. So this can kind of get away from where Airtable needs you to have multiple collaborators. Uh, you can still keep your data in a pro base, but then update, have your contractors or your just your employees update records out of a free workspace. So that's the one that I'm gonna show you in the future. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see that one. Uh, it's kind of a workaround to all of this, but it's a pretty clever way of uh, using some of these tools that I give you with the pre-filled forms, with the update record automations, and with the different bases and workspaces that I suggest you create uh, to get around Airtable's pricing and really just use it effectively as a team. So I'd love to know that down in the comments. And if you're curious about that pre-filled form, what you can do is you can check out this video right here on the end screen. You can learn how to write a very simple, very, very simple formula to pre-fill an Airtable form. And it'll make it dynamic based on every single record of yours, and it'll really take your Airtable database to the next level. So if you go click on that video right there in the end screen, it'll just be that box right there. You can go click on that and go learn about Airtable form prefill formulas. Um, and without further ado, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.